Hey, what's up? It's marketalchemist.camp where we learn Elixir and Phoenix by building things. I've recently been covering new features in Phoenix 1.8. Uh, one of the major ones is Phoenix scopes, which are used for restricting parts of your app to authenticated users only. And last time we covered doing that on a per live view basis. This time we're going to go even more fine grained. We're going to restrict based on actions within a single live view. So you can see this on mount hook, which is available as soon as you run Nix Phoenix Gen off, it'll put a function to do this in your user auth. This will require that a user is authenticated to visit the live view at all. Let's look at what it would be like to do that on a per action basis. And we're going to go to the index view to do that. I've got two browsers open, one in dark mode where the user is not logged in, the other where I am authenticated as myself. And you can see there are already some customizations I did where some of the, the buttons don't show up depending on whether or not you're logged in. In order to have multiple actions lead to this page, that probably means we have multiple views of the index, like maybe there's a uh, a default view, which this is, and then maybe there's a graphical view, and then maybe there's a, an augmented view that only admins or a certain group of people can see. So let's just start adding that. First, we'll add a div right inside the header here. Right now, we'll just have uh, empty parentheses, and we'll make this, uh, let's see, class text small and text gray 400 right and then in here we're just going to put the current action actually no we're not we're going to put the the options that someone can click so those have to be links we'll just make three navigate links like so and right now they're all to show but give us an idea of what that looks like undefined level that's right because we don't we don't have that yet Okay, show, show, show. We probably want to uh, put some dividers in there. It looks somewhat reasonable. Okay, so the first one will just be the default view, and that's going to be the index. Second one will be uh, graphical. And then we'll have an augmented view. All right, if we click default, we should stay on the, the same page where we are. If we click graphical, we should get an error because we don't have that in our router. Go to router, and let's see, we'll make a couple of copies of levels here. Uh, graphical and augmented. And the actions will be the same, augmented and graphical. Okay. Let's try this again. Okay, we now have three different actions that all lead to the same live view. Next step is to restrict access based on that. Uh, let's first go back to the form, take a look at this mount hook. So on mount, app web user auth require authenticated. This was already generated for us in the user auth module. Uh, let's take a quick look at that user auth. So we have require pseudo mode, require authenticated. So we want something like this that's only going to get run if the action is not in a list that we allow. Uh, let's go to our index page and just take a look at what kind of, what kind of API we want for this. So uh, require authenticated, we'll have to pass more information than that. So we'll pass a tuple so we can give it the list of what's allowed and we'll call this require authenticated except and then we'll enumerate everything where authentication isn't required that's much better than doing the reverse where you specify where it is required because uh, everything is secure by default this way and you don't have to worry about something being open that shouldn't be open just because you forgot to add it to the list uh, let's see. So we will require authenticated except index and graphical. That'll be, yeah, that'll be what we want. This isn't defined, so we've got an error. 
Now, what do we write to get this syntax? Well, go back to the user auth. Let's make this on mount hook for require authenticated our starting point. So we'll just customize the function to do what we want it to. We're going to take a tuple instead of require authenticated. We'll call this require authenticated except. We'll also take a list of allowed actions that don't require authentication. And close the tuple. In here, you can see the logic for require authenticated is basically just getting the user if there is a current scope. So if they're logged in, get the user. If they're not, uh, it'll be nil, and so the if will fail. We'll just make a helper variable for this, call it current user, and we'll set it to the exact same thing from this logic. So if soccer assign current user, do, okay, and then we'll say if current user, do. So, so far, no changes. It's still the exact same behavior. We'll make another helper variable for whether or not the current action is always allowed. Action always allowed. And that's going to be the current action, which we can get from socket.assigns live action. If that's in allowed actions, then we can continue on with the, the mounting of the socket and rendering everything regardless of whether or not a user is logged in. So if current user or action always allowed, then we continue as normal. Otherwise, we'll put the flash error and force them to redirect to log in. Let's save that and go back to our index module. So this should require authentication except for index and graphical routes. Got default, graphical, augmented. Uh, this user is logged in, so that's to be expected. For this user that's not logged in, we expect these two routes are allowed. This one should force a login, and it does. Excellent. Okay, so let's say graphical is also not allowed. So everything's going to require authentication except index. Now that graphical, you have to log in. And that's how we can require authentication on a per action basis. Hope you found that useful. See you next time.